Hello and uh, welcome back to the second part of these tutorials for knowledge base management. And in this tutorial, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating articles through the three different modes, which is through a standard document, a external document, and from resolved calls. So from where we left off with the catalogues, it rolls into this section here uh, because we've already assigned rights to our catalogues and to our analysts. Um, to have the necessary permissions against them. So what we're going to do is show you these three different areas that you can actually create these articles from. Um, so if we go to the client here and if we go into the knowledge base menu at the top there you'll see that you've got two of the options available which I'm speaking about which is the new knowledge base document which will look like this. There we go. And uh, so effectively what that will have is your standard problem and solution text of which you can enter your own HTML. So I'll be showing you a bit more around the HTML in a later session. In the external document, it looks very similar in terms of the actual template. However, at the bottom, you'll see that you've got the section there to actually add on an attachment. But the first thing I'm going to show you is adding to the knowledge base through resolving a call. So if we go and just log a test call here. Just going to give it a uh, priority and reopen the call. And I'm just going to resolve that straight away. And this counts whether you're resolving the call or actually closing the call. So it doesn't matter which option you're choosing uh, at either stage, you can actually add to the knowledge base. So if I tick the box on the right hand side there, so that's saying that I do want to add this article to the knowledge base. There is a setting against the analyst so that you can set this on by default. Um, although I would suggest potentially keeping that off purely because you might not want to add everything into the knowledge base from incidents because that might just duplicate and this it would just be quite a big a big admin task really to sort through these calls. So at this point obviously you've gone you've gone through the stages of your incident and you've fixed the problem and you want to be able to add this into your knowledge base just for future use if something comes up with a similar similar issue. Um, so I'm just going to type in a description here for the fix, just something standard reboot fixed the problem. And I'm just going to go resolve call. It'll ask me, do you really want to resolve it? I say yes. It will then give you the option here. So you have an option whether you want to reopen this in the actual knowledge base uh, document. So it will add the document right now. So that allows you to tinker with it and maybe just amend the problem or solution text before it goes into the knowledge base. Or you can use the option to defer it until later. So I'll show you both options. I'll go to the um, new document uh, now option. So I'll click OK. So this is appears in our uh, template, which I've shown you uh, just before there. So it's showing you it's for this particular call. Um, it's given my my problem text and solution text, which I entered in. So obviously maybe we don't want that as the problem text. So maybe let's enter in our own one. Um, Error appears when accessing MS Paint. Error 101. Um, so you could, you know, you could, you could potentially add these sort of things into your keywords here. So searches based on the knowledge base, which we're doing in the next section, um, will cover. Um, this sort of this sort of area of what you'd include in your keywords, um, where you can actually search for articles. So it's important that you include some uh, keywords here for you for, to ease searching to find find these articles easier. So I'm just going to add in a few more. So paint. I'll do. Um, more so. Maybe select a profile, so it's going to go software. So if, as soon as you select a profile, it will ask you whether you want to actually replace the keywords in here, um, or whether you want to just 
keep the existing ones that we already had and I'm going to click on cancel so it doesn't replace what I've already got in there. So I'm just going to cover these other options uh, as soon as I've created this particular record here so I'm going to show you that again in a second. Um, this will automatically create a reference number for me um, and it goes automatically into the resolved help desk course catalog so one thing is that you need to make sure that you've got the rights to that particular catalog and uh, the status is being composed which is correct um, so we don't need to change that um, however we will have options for approval published retired so if I go into add record it then say there we go, it's created successfully, it's given me a, uh, a knowledge base reference number there. And if I just click on the Resolved Help Desk Calls catalogue, which we have rights to, we can see here that the title of this call has been resolved and added to the knowledge base. Is in here, again you can change this again just by double clicking on it, you can go back into it and change change the title again. So we just say MS Paint Error, Error 101. Save changes. There we go. MS Paint Error 101. It's been added into our uh, knowledge base. But what if you wanted to do it the other way around? So what if you want to actually defer it till later? You might not have the time to uh, add these or you know to edit your articles before it goes into the knowledge base. Or maybe you have some kind of approval system where particular people will go through your um, your articles before they go into the um, main search searchable lists for the uh, article themselves. So if I just create in another call and then resolve this call and then select defer until later so now we have the this separate area here so you don't need to give rights to this area but you can see the resolved slash closed calls awaiting publication so just to remind you how you would get to this particular area is when you go to the knowledge base view you've got search and browse so as soon as you click on browse you've got these catalogues available where you can check uh, what articles are within there. So if I go to the resolved slash close calls awaiting publication, so you can see in here that you have one that's awaiting like some form of approval before it goes into your into your uh, into your article into your knowledge base. So here again you can make any adjustments you want to to the problem or solution or maybe you want to add in more keywords it's being composed here it says, so maybe you want to say now it's approved for publishing so now it's because it's approved for publishing it's going to put it into the results help desk calls I go to add record there we are, it's been done, it's removed it from that area and now it's added it to our uh, main knowledge base there one helpful little tip with this is that when, you, when you're creating an article so if we were going to use the second option now in terms of creating a new knowledge base document you have this option in the bottom left hand side here which is visible to public. What that will do is that will ensure that this article is viewable on the self-service portal. So if I was going to create this particular article, let's call it SAP error. Error is in accessing SAP. And again, fill in our keywords. Profile. I've got a separate profile there for the SAP ones. Cancel. So, again, just adding that kind of approval layer. If you only want the article to be viewable from an analyst point of view, untick that box as part of your creation of the article. That will make sure that this can't be searchable on the self-service portal. Um, equally, you could have a separate catalogue here if you wanted to, to um, for your kind of approvals before it goes into your main catalogue if you wanted to. Or 
again you can use the statuses to for awaiting approval maybe you want to automatically say it's approved for publishing straight away or whether it's published so if I click on add record there there we go you can see that it's opened up more tabs here and uh, in a later tutorial we're going to go over these kind of advanced settings in here and what you can do with them in regards to feedback and logging change requests from the feedback that's been given so that's all with the actual creation with this particular document um, we can see now if I go back to it again we've got SAP error 202 that's appeared it's given us a date and the reference number in here if we now go and submit an external document I'm just going to create an external document there we go so again same same things here um, if I just give this a title test external document and in the document area there I just literally click on the blank area if I click choose our external dot text again it will accept um, your Adobe PDFs and Word documents or Excel all your main sort of attachments that you usually create your articles in it will accept them so if I select our text file just purely purely because on here we don't have office installed on the server so um, I've selected the external it's showing that it's getting the external file from that area and again go put in our keywords remember the red mark means it's mandatory so I won't be able to save without without the keywords there um, you'll see that there's no solution tab so that's expecting that you're going to include your document which will effectively answer the actual query or what, what the analyst or customer is actually searching for so if I click on add record it's been created and you'll see my external documents catalog here we have our uh, external document so if I was going to access that external document I could right click on my article here and go open document and there we go this is some text if I was going to do that based on our previously um, selected or created articles um, we can open document and it will open up in our in our web page and there we go so it's giving you a problem and solution text So I hope that helps in regards to the creation of articles. In the next video, what we'll be doing is showing you how you can actually search for your articles and tune your articles so that they're easily found.